here is a question for you. Is it possible to turn that idea for an herbal business that you have in your head into a real life breathing business in the next six months without working yourself to the ground? I've got good news for you because the answer is yes. It is going to take work, it is going to take concentration, and you are going to have to put your heart and soul into this. But it doesn't have to work you to the ground, it doesn't have to exhaust you. In fact, it can become your source of energy if you go about it the right way. And that is what we're going to be talking about in this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please do hit subscribe on the Herbal Entrepreneur channel and the little bell icon so that you will be able to get notifications when new videos are released. And lastly, do hit like on this video as well so that other herbalists can see this video as well. It will be recommended to them in the YouTube algorithm. And ultimately, we can grow this field of herbalism a little bit more together. So now let's get into the process a little bit about how you can actually start to build your business in the next six months. Now it really does all start with the idea. And so I would really encourage you to spend a little bit of time thinking about your idea and if it is the right one to follow right at the beginning. Even if you spend like seven days just truly thinking about your idea and how that's gonna pan out for you, um, it might seem like a waste of time at the beginning when you want to go and purchase domains and supplies and start getting the tinctures macerating or whatever it is that you want to start doing. Really just considering your um, idea and if it's the right one is really important. There are a few things that I would like to um, point out here that are important in terms of your idea. The first one is that it is really important to follow your instincts and what makes you unique, okay? So if you have this idea and if you're watching this video, it's quite likely you do already have some form of idea in mind. Um, really do have confidence in what you have to offer, your unique offer and that idea. And really just think about how you can um, incorporate uh, your uniqueness into that um, idea that you have and how you can offer that as a part of your business. On the flip side, it is really important to think about how you can stand out from everyone else out there. You don't want to kind of follow in the footsteps of someone else. You don't want to do the same thing as someone else because you're not them and you're never going to do uh, what they're doing as well as you can do what you could be doing. Um, there's a, a nice little quote that I think about sometimes. I didn't come up with this myself. I'm not sure where I did come, like where I did first hear it, but it's like when everyone else is zig zigging, you can zag or when everyone else is zagging, you zig. But like if you see everyone else out there is all starting to do um, a particular type of business or there is something that they're always doing, um, you can do it a little bit differently, offer something different, and that can actually be a good thing to get you started. The next step, once you have got your idea and you're sure that you're ready to test out this idea, is to make a plan. And the plan is so important to really, um, first of all, validate your idea that you've come up with, but also to make sure that you are spending your time in the right areas to really prioritize your time and energy, to make sure you're getting as much done as you can without actually getting exhausted, okay? This is so important because uh, I can guarantee if you write a big list of everything that you would like to be doing to set your idea into motion, you only actually need to be doing like probably half of them. There is the Pareto principle that guides a lot of what I do, which is like 80% of the results come from 20% of the actual actions that you take. And this is actually very freeing because it means that you don't have to do everything. You do not have to be on social media. You do not have to be on um, going to every single event. You do not need to sponsor different local things. You can do any of these individual things but you should just be really intentional about deciding which ones to do so that you're not spreading yourself thin and um, just doing what's the most important. This is why the planning part is so important because it allows you to really hone in on what is going to make the biggest difference and make sure that your energy is just spent on those areas. The significance of sharpening your axe. 
You actually do worse if you just get out there and do, do, do right from the beginning because you're chopping at that tree with a blunt axe and you're going, going, going. If you spend like 30 minutes at the beginning of your cutting down the tree or your building your herbal business um, and you sharpen the axe first, it is so much easier to chop down the tree and you can do it in like a few um, wax or whatever you call them in, in axes um, instead of um, uh, continuing to hit with a um, blunt axe. And so that's really important that just spending a little bit of time to hone your skill set first is um, going to ensure your success and allow you to like effortlessly build that herbal business without like working yourself to the ground, which is what this video is all about. Once you do have that plan in place, the next step is getting those logistics in order. So this is things like your business name, maybe getting a domain name on your website, um, starting to get accounting set up, setting up a business bank account, any legal protection you may need, insurance, all of these logistics, there is quite a lot that goes into it and it is important to cover all of these things so that you have them all ready to go and you're able to um, set that into motion. Now by this point, I think it is honestly realistic for you to have that idea, the um, plan and the primary logistics set up in about a month like it truly is if you um, prioritize in that plan what you need to be doing it doesn't actually take that much time to set up a business bank account it doesn't take that much time to um, like get some insurance to do those things if you've done that research and you have like contacts to help you and those sort of things it doesn't take that much time it's really about prioritizing those activities so once you are at that around about a month mark and you've got those logistics sorted the next step is to really get into the practice of putting it out there so that you can validate your idea okay now validating your idea is not a, a a matter of just asking people if it's going to work. It is about getting people to put their wallets where their mouths is. And so this is actually getting people to pay for what you offer. Because this again is one of the most important parts of this video is that we want to be building a profitable our businesses. And this is around like a way to actually sustain your lifestyle. And to do that, you are going to need to ask for people to pay for your products and services. And so you need to do that by validating your idea, by putting a product out there, offering it to someone and seeing what the response is. Sometimes the response will be straight away yes, sometimes the response will be straight away no, sometimes the response will be mixed. And the idea of this is to really gauge that response and tweak your offer so that it's not just what you think people want, but you're actually offering what people truly want. Because that is where you start to really build a thriving business. Because when you are aligned with you offer what people want, then things naturally um, grow. You start that wheel of word of mouth marketing. Everyone loves what you have to offer. You have this thriving business that you love to run and it all um, kind of snowballs from there. It will depend on what type of product or service that you have as to how you will validate that. But essentially you want to be um, offering it out there, starting to actually sell. And this is where the next step comes and you need to become a little bit confident with selling, okay? And more than selling, it's about communicating the value of what you have to offer. I know that so many herbalists have a lot of issues with doing this. It's so easy to promote someone else and to um, talk up how great your friend or your herbalist um, that you've worked with is. But when it comes to talking about yourself, it is so much more difficult. And I experienced this as well myself. But um, there comes a point that when you shift in that mindset and realize that it's really about communicating the value of what you have to offer and it all shifts. You're helping people by allowing them to experience the wonders of your herbal products and services. And when you truly believe that, it becomes so much easier to communicate to people and they want to try what you have to offer and then obviously it'll snowballs from there. So um, that is the next step is to really um, increase your confidence in communicating. And this does tie hand in hand in that validation of your product because as you get better at communicating your value, you'll be able to um, 
communicate that to your target audience. And at the same time, if something doesn't quite mesh with your target audience, when you talk to them and understand what they truly want, you can tweak that offering and the way you present it to feature in the future to um, bring that alignment uh, closer and um, so that your herbal products and services really fill that gap of what people want. So ideally, I would set about like a 90 day timer in your calendar to give you this like um, couple of months to test out the product. And so your goal for the first, like from the 90 days from today would be to like validate your herbal business idea okay and so we've got like the first month of getting your idea making the plan getting the logistics set up month two and three are on like getting it out there listening to your target audience giving them something getting that feedback back and tweaking your offer and giving it out to more people and like starting like your, your goal in this like first 90 days is honestly to reach as many people and get some data on um how people interact with your products and services at that like halfway point of this six months business, we are going to do a data analysis. And this is when we're going to look at everything you've done so far, uh, what products and services you've put out there, what sort of response people have had, and then we're gonna make some decisions. We are going to decide which things make the most sense to follow through on, which things make the sense to develop further, and which things are just a waste of time and energy and you do not need to continue on. This is such an important part of the process because it's what really allows you to continue your able business for the long term without burning out and feeling exhausted. And I know that a lot of herbalists do feel these feelings of, um, too much and heaviness over the long term, but allowing yourself that time to reflect and decide on how to progress forward is so important. So but that's what we're going to be doing at around this 90 day mark. I would recommend that you really do a complete review of everything you've done and a, um, a realignment, an adjustment going forward as to how you can um, make it work better for you in the future. This is both for your clients for your business and for yourself. Now, finally, we have six months in this video and you've still got three months left, left to test those tweaks and continue uh, building your herbal business. And you will start to see that if you are doing good work at this point in time, you will start to get that wheel of a word of mouth marketing working for you. I have talked about this with several different herbalists uh, in the Herbal Entrepreneur Conference sessions over the years, and it is such a core part of a successful herbal business, really offering that high quality service and allowing people to experience what you have to offer and um, then sharing that with their friends and the other people in their community so that you can have a large impact and ultimately your profitable herbal business will start to grow and continue to run on its own based on the love of what you do from other people. So as you can see, this really does take that time from day zero to um, six months from now. And if you follow this process to really go about like starting with that idea that is unique to you and is not following those patterns that everyone else is following right now, do something unique that really stands out from everyone else that is automatically going to get the attention of the other people in your community and really get out there. Next step is to make a plan, work out what is the most important that you want to focus on in the first few months and what is going to be your like key areas of effort and time. Then you want to get the logistics into place. And so this is getting those bank accounts, insurance, um, getting domain names, social media handles, whatever it is that you need, a logistical place, a renting, um, whatever it is that you need to actually run your business, that is the next step. Then we're going to be getting into validating your idea. So really putting it out there and getting comfortable with communicating what you have to offer with people, continuing that conversation of offering that value, listening to your target audience, understanding understanding what they want and tweaking your offer to actually give them what they want. Then we're going to move on and like 
test and analyze what you've done. Have you reached those goals? Are you spending time unnecessarily in something? Is there a particular part of your business that is just like making you dread working that you could somehow cut out or possibly delegate to someone else? Is there something you could do in that area? How is the profitability of your business at this point? Are there best sellers that you could um, kind of push up and promote more at this point? Is there something that you could cut out completely? There are all these decisions that you can make at this halfway point and then tweak going on into the next area where it's really about um, continuing that momentum and getting the word of mouth marketing out there so that more people can experience what you have to offer. So as you can see, it is actually possible to like set that business into motion and it truly is possible to make a profit in the first six months. Treat it as an experiment and give yourself this time to see how it works and really give it your all for this time, but allow yourself the time to rest and prioritize those activities so that you still have time and energy for everything else in the life and world that we have going on. And this will ultimately allow you to build a business that you love to run over the long term, which is what we are all about on the Air Entrepreneur channel. Once again, if you haven't already, please do uh, hit subscribe on the Herb Entrepreneur channel and like this video, the bell icon, so that you can be notified of new uh, videos in the future. And if you're interested in learning more, I would recommend checking out the Herbal Circle. I believe the doors are closed currently, but you can apply to join us. And we go into this process in a lot more detail uh, with a complete roadmap step-by-step -step of how to like literally do each logistical step, how to get into the marketing, what things you should be actually testing and analyzing so that you can grow and scale your business over the long term. So if you're interested in that, check out the link below and you can um, find out more about the Herbal Circle and get support from me and the other members inside the group. But I really do wish you all the best for your journey as an herbalist and an herbal entrepreneur because this is such an important role that we are playing in the world and the more that we help each other, the greater impact we can have as the entire profession of herbalism. So I'm so glad that you're here and I can't wait to see you in future videos coming up soon.